um, personal part of uh, my life and my wife's life in Texas because you all have been so good to us for so long being introduced first to the area by Joanne who's been terrific and Ernie and everyone up here for our first debate back in August when we took on the Mr. Ratliff and C-Scope and we came back for another debate and we've been here for coffees at people's homes and you all have been just wonderful and it feels like a second home. I'll tell you that and I know I speak for Ken and Malachi and Justice Johnson and all of us have been traveling the state. We see each other all the time. It's a wonderful place to campaign the state of Texas. You know, when you're driving through on vacation or you're just going to another point, you kind of skim the surface, see the highlights. But when you're campaigning, you get to go into people's homes and their businesses. And you get to sit down with them and learn about their struggles and their families and their, ins and, and their aspirations uh, for their children. And you really learn the heart and soul of Texas. And let me tell you what, the heart and soul of Texas is really strong and alive and really good. Feel good about it. That's why, as uh, Philip just said, the Democrats have a target on us. We stand in their way of achieving their ultimate goal, and that's taking over the United States of America for their liberal values, their liberal views. Because if they win Texas, you've heard it before, I've said it many times, you never elect a Republican to the White House again because electoral votes of New York, California, and Texas make it mathematically impossible. So we stand in their way, and I say we, I mean all of us together. The Tea Parties around the state, the conservative Republicans, the grassroots, and a strong, strong Christian community in this state. Uh, it's just wonderful. Go ahead and applaud, applaud all of those groups. You know, I tell everyone, I mean it, I'm a Christian first, a conservative second, a Republican third, um, and that's why I'm able to run this race fairly stress-free. Um, it's been a tough day for Ken Paxton and me, I think. Uh, I can tell you who's winning the Attorney General's race. The guy who's getting attacked left and right, yeah. Ken Paxton. I can tell you who's running and winning the Lieutenant Governor's race. Uh, and that's Dan Patrick standing right here because we're getting hit every way. I think there were seven new attacks <coughs> launched today. They don't attack the person in fourth place. They don't attack the person in third place. And they don't attack the person in second place. Uh, they're going after the person that they are scared to death of. How dare an authentic grassroots conservative become attorney general or lieutenant governor? I told Ken earlier the food line, I said, you know, the good news is we only have three opponents. He has two, I have three. If we had eight, I don't know if we could handle all these. There wouldn't be enough air time for it. Um, and uh, Joy and I were talking before. You know, when you get, and my, my wife and I have this discussion a lot. And she would be here, by the way, tonight. Some of you have met her before. She's been up here a lot. But we had a grandbaby uh, 10 days ago or 12 days ago. And we had a, that was a grandson, and we had a granddaughter three weeks ago. So, so it's been very busy, and it's really been good for her because um, she's known around the house as the uh, duct tape um, senator's wife. Um, we give her, for Christmas, we gave her duct tape in all different colors to match her clothes because sometimes she just can't resist shouting out something at a debate. Um, in fact, am I not kidding, Joanne? Well, we had the debate up here against uh, Ratliff and Cisco. I don't, were any of you here for that that night? Yeah. Well, there was a, there was, we were talking about lesson plans. And my wife's a school teacher. Was, she retired now. Elementary school teacher for a long time. And I had made the case that there's nothing wrong with school teachers developing their own lesson plans. And he criticized the teachers for doing that. <laughs> well, we can't depend on those. We can't trust them. We gotta, you know. And I heard this voice that sounded very familiar to me say, Give me a break, won't you? And I thought, that sounded a whole lot like Jan. <laughs> Couldn't be. This is the first debate, and it's a long way to go. <laughs> so she would be here and says hello to everyone if it wasn't for the baby. So this is good. She's been a little occupied the last week. Um, let me tell you about who we are. I was asked a question by a reporter earlier. But I've been asked a lot of questions by reporters earlier. By the way, did any of you see a tweet I sent out yesterday? Good. That's good. Our, <laughs> you heard about it. I got to tell you the story. Uh, let me tell you, our tweet. Have you heard about this, Ken? Yeah. Yeah. Our tweet made the Conan... O'Brien, I don't even watch that show, but we made national television.